Hey there, future GMAT conquerors. Let's dive deep into the realm of words. Now, your words aren't just some letters on a page of paper, but instead, they are your strategic tool towards acing your GMAT preparation. So, today we are going to look at the logic behind words. So, first things first, how much English should I exactly know? So, a basic high school level English or college level English will do the trick for you. Some standard business and finance related English words is something that you might want to get accustomed to. And for that, you can start reading newspaper articles, etc. So, how much English should you know, I read, that might be a question for some of you. So, you can start reading a lot of books, newspapers, blogs, etc. But to get used to the US based context that is most frequently seen in the GMAT verbal section, you should get accustomed to those specific type of newspapers or articles. So, for this, you can watch out for Washington Post, Bloomberg articles and articles from the New York Times. So, with that, let's dive into the logic behind words section. So, first of all, one thing that you need to understand is, don't just stick to the definitive meaning of words. Instead, start understanding the contextual importance of various words put in a given statement. For example, take the statement, the politician's speech was meticulously crafted to appeal to diverse constituents. Now here, the word meticulously literally means hardworking. But what does exactly the word convey when it is put in this particular statement? It is trying to highlight the characterization of the politician who is shown as someone who is very, one, uh, you know, Im who is finding it very important to craft this particular speech in a way that appeals his vote bank. Therefore, the kind of words that author would use is something that you need to take care of whenever you're reading a given context. Coming to the next important point, there are some words in a reading comprehension passage that we technically call as trigger words or transition words. Now, these words tell us how can we track an argument, whether an argument that was stated in the first para is getting strengthened or whether it is getting weakened or a new context is put forth. So, these words, some of the examples of these words could be however, although, moreover, etc. For example, take an argument excerpt that says identifying keystone species is problematic because of some reason. Now, that reason is stated in this particular statement that there exists a lack of correlation between these species and their predatory behavior. So, the main importance of this statement is that something is problematic. Okay, now the next statement says, or in fact, it starts with moreover. So, the word moreover highlights that there is a similarity in the tone that the previous statement has given us. So, if the previous statement talks about a problem, then this particular statement is also going to highlight nothing but another problem. So, identifying keystone species is problematic because of one thing and because of another thing. So, there are two reasons why the author is trying to say that identification of keystone species is problematic. So, words like these, however, will show a contrast, although will show a contrast again and moreover, will try to show some similarity. Now, there are a bunch of words like this that you need to familiarize yourself with. Now, another very important aspect is what kind of words is the author using when he is writing a given RC passage? So, the choice of words that author will use highlights the author's opinion, the author's point of view and also gives us a glimpse about the author's attitude on whatever topic he is writing it. For example, 
Although the case study of Kazuko Nakane gives valuable insights, it is too particularistic in nature. Now consider that this is a statement that I have taken from a reading comprehension passage. Words like valuable tells us that the author is actually trying to highlight some pros about this case study that K.N. has undertaken. But along with that, the author has also used the word although, which means he is also trying to show or suggest that there are some drawbacks to this particular case study as well. So although he is trying to highlight some pros, he is not considering that it's completely valuable, but he's also highlighting some drawbacks of it. Therefore, therefore, the author is actually not being, not being very, you know, disapproving towards this case study, but he's on a neutral stand about this particular case study. So here are a bunch of words. And besides this, there are a lot more. Some of these I have collated here that help us to identify the tonality of a passage. The words like although, however, yet, despite, surprisingly will tell us that there is some contradiction and whenever you encounter any of these words in your reading comprehension passage, understand that they are all trying to suggest contradiction towards whatever was stated in the prior statement or in the prior paragraph. Similarly, if you see words like these, such as advantage, laudable, significant, valuable, advancement, etc., that shows that the author is trying to highlight benefits about something. Negative tone sounding words, such as criticize, problem, refute, limitation, etc., always indicate there is some negativity or disapproval towards an idea. Some words will convey a neutral and bland tone where the author is not trying to take any sides such as mixed, unbiased, critique, even-handed, impartial, etc. So be mindful of these words the next time you see them in a reading comprehension passage. Another very significant thing is be very cautious about word shifts. Now in CR Para, we very frequently come across word shift or language shift. For example, studies show that people who exercise regularly have lower stress levels. Therefore, everyone who has lower stress levels exercises regularly. Now, this particular para consists of a premise and a conclusion. So while the premise was using the word or the phrase people who exercise regularly, the conclusion is drawn about everyone who has lower stress level. So there's a drastic shift in this language. So you need to take care of this. So the paragraph somewhere has assumed that everyone whose stress level is, you know, low always exercises daily. So that is something could be a correct assumption, could be a wrong assumption. So we need to take care of these word shifts very mindfully. So here are some words that are very specific to GMAT that you should learn or that you should remember. For example, underscore, what does it exactly mean? It means to emphasize. Words like preclude is to stop. Now the words like qualify, means not 100% or exceptional or conditional. Words like advocate means support. Now, where would you exactly encounter them? They can show up in a CR para. They can show up in an RC para. As well as they can come up in the RC questions and in the options as well. So, to get to the right answer choice, you might have to correctly understand and identify where, what exactly these words mean. For example, if a statement says that uh, an ongoing review is definitely warranted about the school textbooks. So, that statement suggests that the author is saying that the school textbooks 
needs to be definitely reviewed. So there is a need or a necessity. So the word warranted, I should be able to tell that the author is actually trying to tell us that we require school textbooks to be reviewed. So the review is warranted. So we need to familiarize ourselves with all these words. And one important aspect of it is they also do show up in bold face critical reasoning questions. Some terminologies related to bold face are very integral such as what exactly is a claim, what exactly is a premise. So all of these things we need to take care about. So if a statement says that a given statement is state of affairs, we should know that it is actually a premise. Okay, so these are some things that we need to take care of whenever we are dealing with the CR and as well as in the RC of GMAT. So please stay alert, stay cautious whenever dealing with words. Now, if you like these kind of contents that we bring up for you, please do consider subscribing our channel. We take in a lot of effort and we do a lot of research to get this kind of content for you. So your like, your sharing these video with your peers will definitely motivate us a lot. Thank you so much for listening to me with patience.